Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner with uh, Community Coronavirus Update number 35. The themes today are following the science, following the data, and more in mass and testing. Uh, so an article that, or an interview that just came out this past weekend was uh, five former CDC directors pretty much agreeing on what went wrong in the COVID-19 response. Uh, these are five uh, CDC directors spanning three different uh, administrations, both Republican and Democrat. Uh, including uh, Julie Gerberding, who was in the Bush administration, all saying essentially the biggest number one problem is, frankly, just lack of leadership uh, that just it literally doesn't exist. Uh, the second is just the lack of a clear, consistent message and that really, you know, something as simple as mass would get us out of this, but there's still not a clear, consistent message uh, coming across at all levels. And this is pretty much to my fr frustration and pretty much every public health professional in the country that this is not coming from the federal government and even uh, from the state government, unfortunately. Uh, so one thing I would use, I've explained this to someone recently, it's kind of like a bridge engineer. So let's say that uh, the bridge over the Douglas, over the Missouri River collapses uh, outside between Omaha and Council Bluffs, and we got to rebuild that bridge. And this is an actual bridge collapse. This is the one that was up in Minneapolis a few years back. Uh, and so the governor says, hey, let's build this bridge. And the Douglas County engineer says, uh, I don't think that's going to stand up. And the head of engineering at the largest engineering firm in Lincoln says, I don't think that's going to stand up. And the uh, dean of the College of Engineering says, I don't think that's going to stand up. Would you go ahead and build that bridge just because engineers don't build bridges, CEOs build bridges? Well, no. I mean, it either is going to stand up or it's not. And so part of our problem with our plan at the federal level and, frankly, at the state level is it's just not based on sound public health science. And that's there's really just no way around it. Um, so one way to know uh, is, is how we're doing is frankly just look at us compared to everybody else. Essentially if you look at this map, the states that are green and yellow are doing a pretty good job, the states that are doing red are doing an awful job, and the, uh, the people doing orange are also, you know, they're doing a bad job, just not as bad as a job as the people in orange. Uh, and so this is the problem, is that the ultimate judge of is your public health uh, response working is are your rates going down and what are they compared to your peers who have similar resources and access to science that you do. Um, the other thing is, you know, what numbers would you look at? Unfortunately, Nebraska is kind of middle of the pack. It's not the worst, but it's also not the best, but it could be a heck of a lot better given our resources in the state if we would just start paying attention to them. Uh, and so what we need to do is look at these numbers. And the most important number is daily new cases. And they, uh, this COVID Act now, which is one of my favorite sites as far as looking and comparing across the country, says new key indicator. Please take a look if you don't understand why. Uh, they basically go through and explain to you why the most critical method is that new cases per 100,000 population. That is the main thing in your guide star are, are you doing a good job and what should you do? Uh, now there are other measures that do go into a risk dial, just like our Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department's using. It's essentially some of these other things. But daily new cases is by far the number one most important thing. Infection rate, this is essentially just is it going up or is it going down? Or if it's just kind of smoldering. Uh, positive test rate, this is uh, what percentage of the tests are going positive. The reason this is necessary is because we still have inadequate testing. So an early indicator that numbers will start going up is that your positive test rates start going up. Uh, we still, what we really need is rapid testing where we can result in 24 to 48 hours and still is what is most missing is we do not have that. Uh, some of the people will say that they can do that. What they're not telling you though is it may take you one to five days to get an appointment to even get the test. So the, in, the effective test turnaround is really sometimes five to seven days. We need to be at the point where we get test turnaround in 24 to 48 hours when we want it. Uh, the, interestingly, what I would call both the most important and least important indicator is your ICU capacity. Uh, it's most important that if you mess this up, you are horribly in bad shape. Uh, the reason I'd say it's least important is if you're looking, if you have any understanding of this at all, there's no way you would get there. Uh, and so this is a, a, a late indicator that you screwed up horribly. So this is not what you should follow because if you're following this, you won't, you literally wouldn't get there. Uh, we have states that unfortunately got there. So Florida is at 100% of their ICU capacity. That governor screwed up horribly, as did their, whoever leads their public health. Those people should be fired and they should have a recall election when you screw up that badly because that is your responsibility to control your state's epidemic. So uh, basically, how is everybody doing? Uh, there is a ranking and you can click, slide down there. You can click and see where we are. Nebraska is actually smack dab in the middle. Uh, there's going to be a lot said about the Big Ten decision to cancel football, but you know what? Part of the things I would say is if I were one of these states that's done a good job, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you know, maybe Michigan, do I really want a bunch of people like hundreds of people coming here for a football game? Probably not, so there may be travel restrictions. Several states have now pro proposed travel restrictions, such that you're in a greater than 10 per 100,000, meaning orange or red, you can't come to their state, and if you do, you're going to have to self-quarantine for two weeks. Well, how would that work with a football team? Uh, and also, the, some states are proposing a no-play rule, meaning no organized sports sports when rates of spread are above 10 per 100,000, which is this whole area, including where some of us live, but not all of us. 
Uh, so here's how all the states are doing. We should model ourselves off of what these states are doing. They're well below 10 per 100,000. Some are even all the way down to this green level, which is very hard to get to, but it is doable because people have done it essentially. Uh, so Nebraska internally, of course, all decisions are even more local than state level. And of course, we have mixed results across the state. Uh, and so you really need to look at your county and see how you're doing in your area to say, well, where are we doing? Because what Omaha does is not going to be the same as what Lincoln does or Cherry County or Kearney. We all have very different situations and we need to respond based on our environment and our local conditions, not what the somebody down the road is doing. Uh, another example I use is why there needs to be local control. Uh, in some ways, I, another analogy I used with someone this morning is it's like building a deck versus building a 20-story building. If I build a deck outside my house and I undersize a footing and, and, the, and the deck drops an inch or two, that's not that big a deal. I can get out my hydraulic jack, jack it up, put a one or two inch spacer, and then and we're all good, which is literally what I did. I did make that mistake in my own backyard a few years back. Uh, it's a different story building a 20 story building. If you screw up the foundations on a 20 story building, you have a disaster on your hands and the expense is going to be huge. And so in some ways, public health is like that. And you have a much more room for error if you're making these public health decisions in Cherry County or Valentine than you do in Omaha or Lincoln. If Omaha and Lincoln exceeds capacity, you have a disaster on your hand. If you exceed capacity in a small town, you can ship those people down the road to the uh, to the other ICU when your ICU overflows. You can't do that in Omaha because there's no way to ship hundreds of people from Omaha to someplace else if you mess up. Plus just the population density, it's a totally different story. So so large communities like, like we have, if your rates of spread are not where they need to be, you need a mask ordinance and there's just no way around it. Um, so Lancaster County, the good news in Lancaster County is our numbers are dropping. Uh, they're actually a little lower of this this morning. Uh, the COVID local is about eight, 12 hours behind our numbers, uh, but we're, we're at 7.5 on our numbers right now. Our infection rate is dropping. Our positive test rate is low. We are heading in a very good direction. And I think a lot of it has to do with our mask ordinance put in place about three weeks ago. Uh, Douglas County, unfortunately, is not in that situation. Uh, they've been kind of smoldering up in this 18 to 22 range for weeks now. This is too high potentially to safely start your schools, and so this is a problem. Um, another question, though, is should you look at sub-county levels? So some of you know that Omaha Public Schools did go remote, but if you look at the Omaha Public Schools footprint, it's in these higher incidence counties. So their numbers in this area, specific area, Lincoln, might be in the 25, 30, 35 per 100,000, way too high to be safely opening schools. So I think Dr. Cheryl Logan, who made a tough call a week ago, made the right decision and deserves everybody's support for making the correct decision. Uh, one question, though, is does Millard or Elkhorn or, so, or Gretna have to follow the same numbers? They're out here with much lower cases of threads. I think that's an open question, and I think uh, I believe most of them are going to open partially. Uh, but that may be a good decision because Millard and Elkhorn are not OPS, and so you need to localize your decision based on your local resources and your decisions. And it's a, it's a and it's a local decision. So my biggest frustration was Ricketts threatening to overrule p other people's rules. He needs to defer to local control. That's a time-honored conservative Nebraska principle: is local control. Uh, so thankfully, Omaha did pass its mandate uh, last uh, last night, uh, seven to zero. So a unanimous decision that we needed they needed a mass mandate in Omaha, and I'm highly likely think that it would work. Uh, my biggest worry lately actually is Carney. Carney's numbers are up, up uh, going up pretty quickly. Uh, they actually will probably turn red tomorrow. Uh, we looked at their numbers in the morning. They're already above 25. Uh, and so Carney's decision is going to be way different than Lincoln versus Omaha versus Cherry County versus Cheyenne County, Sydney out here where I grew up. Everybody's decision needs to be local based on their local data and based on good sound data. And so if you look at us compared to each other, uh, basically here we are in Lancaster County, mask ordinance put in here, it takes about two weeks for the cycle of virus to start changing for people to adopt and, and uh, for them to make sure the laggards are paying attention. And what do you see? A nice big drop. So we had our CDC director a month ago saying if everybody just wore a mask, we'd be past this epidemic in four to eight weeks. And so Lancaster County is showing that it's working as opposed to Douglas County. But hopefully last night with the new mask ordinance, they'll now finally see this as well. Uh, Buffalo County, there's a rapid increase, like I said they crossed 25 uh, as of this morning. Uh, hopefully they'll get that under control as well. Uh, another uh, local, or not too local, but just the south of the border is Kansas. Kansas actually did put in a statewide mask and mandate. Uh, so every county's pushed back. Uh, so you actually have a test case of three kinds of counties. You have counties who, with, with a mask date, who mandate, who have a dropping uh, numbers. Now they probably went along with the mask mandate because their numbers were higher and they realized they had a problem. These people didn't realize they had a problem and as what we've seen, there may not be masking and their numbers are going up. There are some counties where the county seat uh, 
put it, the city put in a mandate, but not necessarily the county, and they kind of get mixed results. So when, with the man gas, mask mandate drop without up, uh, yet another exa case example that masking does in fact work. Um, so Lincoln, Lancaster County, our, our mask mandate was now on J uh, July 17th. Here's that drop down to 7.5 today. And if we continue this, we'll be in a much safer territory as we open our schools, we'll make, which uh, will give us a big sigh of relief. And hopefully that means we can keep all our sports, youth sports and everything else going as well. All it takes is people to just wear a mask. Uh, some new stuff that has been concerned in the past about airborne transmission, does it aerosolize? Uh, that is theoretically possible. Uh, there's maybe a little data, although the data is honestly mixed. And so this is a good JAMA article, which I thought was very well written and very well reasoned out, uh, that could there be some aerosol uh, spread? They said, well, you know, basically the evidence is still limited. However, if you look at the transmission rate, it just doesn't fit with uh, aerosol spread. It really does fit with droplet spread because your, your R0 would be much higher in, if you would think it's not. And so basically a high quality car mask or face shield when it's not possible to be six feet apart should be adequate to minimize this spread. Just put in your mask and we will make dramatic changes. And so as I've noticed in the last few weeks now that we have a mask ordinance, far more people are wearing a mask. There's the annoying protesters who sort of kind of wear a mask but leave it under their nose. We had a few of those at the, at the school board hearing last night. Just wear the mask. It would be so much better and we get past this so much faster and our economy would, would rebound so much faster. Uh, and if you don't believe me, uh, my, still my favorite video is this mass tips with Uncle Rob with a flamethrower that any kid would uh, get a kick out of. Kind of reminds me of the old uh, uh, Mythbusters episodes, basically showing how well the mask would work. And actually, it's, it's pretty much spot on. And that's a more humorous take than, uh, than a dry science guy's. Uh, lastly, the most important thing that I want to move to next is we need rapid testing. And so there's a guy out of uh, Harvard, the School of Public Health, this uh, Dr. Michael Mina, talking about the possibility that we could do less, although the test would be slightly lower quality, all the loss of quality we've made up for the fact that it would be, it would be f far more available. So you don't have to have the perfect test if you, you can do repeated testing. If you have a good enough test that you can use repeatedly, it's cheap, it's like the home pregnancy test. Uh, essentially, anybody could buy this test for 10 bucks, do it at home, or even less. Boy, could we open things up faster because we would have we would know right away whether we're sick or not. Uh, at the at the end of the one of the the, the this week in virology, they would talked about literally if if you could make this cheap enough that you could print it on paper, spit on the paper, it's positive or negative. You could even open up a bar. Literally, the bouncer could sit out there, spit on this paper. If it's negative, you can go in. If it's positive, sorry, you ain't coming in. Uh, so much could be opened up if we could just get rapidly available repeat testing. Uh, so if you want to take the time, they're they're kind of long episodes, although they're very interesting. This is a very bright guy, and I. Love of his idea. I wish we had a national plan to do something like this. Now, our, still our biggest limitation, the reason we have to have some of these other let, uh, limitations of data like following positive test rates is because we just don't have rapid testing available. We really need tests available within 24 to 8, 4 to 40 hours. They need to be rapid. They need to be cheap. They need to be whenever you need them. You could leave, literally open up national tra international travel again because you could test yourself four days before departure, day of departure, day of arrival, and actually do safe international travel again if we could just get here. Uh, as, as Larry Brilliant, uh, I've used this so many times, early identification, early response is how you control pandemics. We still can't do early identification because we don't have enough testing available. Uh, and so, so there you have it. So this is the updates for the week. I've, again, I've, uh, if you go down to the notes section, all the links to these articles, if you want to read more, and these are very good articles, uh, just go through and read more uh, yourself. Hopefully this is helpful. This is where I, where I work. So, you know, I'm just, no, I'm just not a crazy YouTube blogger, a disclaimer uh, as usual. Uh, and, Hopefully this helps.